So welcome back guys. Before we start the video, I want to take a second to welcome all the new subscribers that have come onto the channel in the last month or so. The channel has added about 800 subscribers in the last month and for that support I really want to tell you that I appreciate that. And I want to also welcome all the new beekeepers that have come onto the channel. My honey harvest video proved to be a pretty popular video and y'all have really enjoyed that and a lot of new beekeepers have come in from that video and from a couple other bee videos as well. But I appreciate your support, I appreciate your subscribing and also for the ones that are still watching the channel that have not subscribed yet, I appreciate y'all watching these videos also. Today I just want to go over a few things that I have learned over my years of beekeeping, which I've only been keep beekeeping about six years. But I want to talk about foundationless beekeeping and I don't want this video to be something that's trying to convince you whether to go foundationless or not go foundationless because it's, because it's really up to you. There's a lot of pros and there's a lot of cons either way. But I wanted to go over what I have found to be the pros and cons in my own experience with foundationless beekeeping. We'll go ahead and start with the pros and then we'll of course get to the cons next. So one of the best advantages in my opinion of foundationless beekeeping is the fact that you can start off with a base of good clean organic wax for your hives. If you buy your uh, wax, wax foundation from a beekeeping supply warehouse, you don't know what that wax has in it. The beekeepers that turn that wax in, you don't know what they've been treating their hives with and you also don't know what kind of an environment that those beehives were kept in. They could have been in a heavily agricultural area, the bees could have been gathering pollen and nectar from crops that were treated with pesticides and those bees are inevitably going to bring that pesticide back to their hive and it's going to be harbored in that wax. So you can always start off with a good base of organic clean wax when you use found when you go foundationless now you don't have any control over the environment your bees are in most of the time so there's a possibility that your bees might be going out and gathering pesticides from flowers or crops or whatever uh, you don't have any control over that but at least you can know that you've started off with a good base The second pro for foundationless beekeeping is, to me, a fairly significant one. It's a lot cheaper to beekeep foundationless than it is to use foundation. I use, I'm transitioning away from foundationless actually right now, and I'll tell you why later. But for me, I use Plastisil foundation, wax coated Plastisil, and this stuff is a dollar a sheet. And that gets really expensive really fast. If you've got a 10 frame hive, I'm not a math expert, but that's $10. If you've got a gangbusters hive that's six or seven stacks deep, six or seven boxes deep, that's 60 or $70 you can save right there by going foundationless. One of the other advantages of foundationless beekeeping is the bees can draw out the comb that they want. It's a much more natural system than uh, providing them with foundation. As you can see on this, uh, this frame right here, this is a foundationless frame. It's about, uh, the date on it is 2013, so it's about five years old. And you can see they pretty well drew out what they wanted. You've got worker comb here in the middle. You've got um, you've got drone comb over on the sides right here and they pretty well just kind of did what they wanted to with it. They've got honey stored over here, they've got brood in various stages right in here and they've got more honey over here or nectar at this stage uh, right in here. If we flip it over uh, you'll find a pretty similar story. There's worker comb in the middle of course and brood on the sides. Now as far as that goes in nature when bees find themselves a good hollow log or a or a uh, hollow tree branch, uh, that's what they do. They don't have any foundation to start off on, so they just draw what they need, and they draw from the top down instead of the sides out. Let's get a little bit of a closer look and compare foundations here. So for this one, this foundationless frame right here, uh, what they do is they festoon, and festooning is just the process by which bees draw comb. They start off on the top right here, uh, which in this case would have been a uh, some popsicle sticks. Uh, simply some popsicle sticks that were stuck into the top bar of, or the groove top on this frame and they start right here and they just kind of hang on, hang down upon themselves uh, and draw wax from the very top. Now for a piece of foundation the bees are forced to draw comb horizontally which of course means they have to start from the middle and go out. So 
this is just a much more natural way to do it and uh, the bees can actually draw out during a good nectar flow in a strong hive the bees can draw this out in three or four days and it's very impressive to watch because they're extremely efficient with it now going back to this frame we talked about all the drone comb that is on this bees will absolutely draw drone comb on foundation that has been imprinted with worker comb but they may draw less now don't be discouraged if you do start foundationless and you end up having a ton of drones in a colony it's probably not going to affect honey production to the extent that you think drones tend to be very noisy they're bigger it seems like there's a ton in there usually it's about 30 percent of your hive so if the drone population is 30 percent or smaller uh, i would not worry about the abundance of drone comb in your hives Another big advantage for foundationless frames is the fact that you can get some very high quality cut comb honey out of it. Uh, this frame right here, I pulled this out of one of my hives today and you can see how nice and pretty these caps are and how nice and even this frame is and all I have to do with this is take it if I wanted to, I could take it and just cut out some good little squares and I could have some good quality cut comb honey without any kind of a uh, Ross rounds or hog half comb system or anything like that um, and that's that's a very cheap and easy economical way to produce comb honey. One other advantage of foundationless beekeeping that can be an advantage in some circumstances is the fact that it can be less time consuming. This is one option for a foundationless frame. I got this frame from Kelly Beekeeping and it is simply a pre-made foundationless frame. It has this uh, I'm not sure what you would call it, this little downward angle right here that the bees can use to begin uh, festooning on and starting their comb on. And if you choose not to put wire reinforcement uh, into this, it's extremely fast. All you have to do is stick this frame together and you're good to go. Uh, I will have a word of warning later about not using wire, uh, wire reinforcement for these frames, but we'll get to that in a minute. This is another really good option for foundationless. Uh, this is just simply a groove top and groove bottom bar frame and you can just put popsicle sticks up in here glue them in there and that creates an excellent foundation or an excellent starting point for the bees to uh, to start their front to start their comb on One big disadvantage to foundationless beekeeping is the fact that the frames can get, well the comb can get fairly flimsy sometimes, especially when it's 95 and 100 degrees outside. They can require special handling. Now this particular frame is a frame that was installed in 2013, so it's five years old. It is very well established. You can see that the bees have attached it all along the sides and along the bottom, and it's a medium frame, so it's pretty, it's pretty stable, but let's take it and cut off the uh, these uh, supports on the sides and see how this frame fares after we do that. Alright, so now we've got all the side and bottom support cut off of this frame. Now the reason that I'm doing this is just to illustrate this frame is a well established frame, but newer frames will not have this bottom support, this bottom attachment, and these side attachments for a few years. I mean, the first and second year they may have some small attachments, but they're not going to be that strong. This one was very well established as you can see. So they're going to be flimsy, and if you get outside on a 100 degree day, you're simply not going to be able to bring this out of the hive and inspect it just like this. Uh, you'll have to take it and you'll have to flip it upright, directly vertical, just like this, in order to not break this frame off and have the, uh, have the comb just fall right out. So as you can see, and I'll push this off to the side a little bit, it can be very unstable. It can be very, very unstable, especially when it's new, soft wax. Uh, you can run into some issues if you do not use wire reinforcement in those frames. Another disadvantage to foundationless beekeeping is the fact that you have to take painstaking measures to determine or to make sure your foundation on your hives, uh, the, the foundation that the hive sits on, 
uh, to make sure that that is level. Now for people who use uh, wooden stands, benches, stuff like that that hold several different hives, it's probably not that big of a deal because you can do one structure for several hives and it's not that serious. Personally, I use concrete blocks and it's very difficult to get concrete blocks perfectly level with one another. Now the reason that you have to do this is because bees in nature draw out from the top down and they can only draw out from the top down with gravity so if your hive is sitting like this instead of level those bees are going to still draw according to gravity and your comb is going to end up looking just exactly like that and it's going to be a big huge nightmare for you and you're going to have all kinds of trouble if you don't rectify the situation really quick so I would consider that a disadvantage to foundationless beekeeping uh, as far as it's very time consuming making sure your hives are, are perfectly level. Another disadvantage to foundationless beekeeping uh, can be cross comb. Now this comb is not exactly cross comb. Uh, there's a component of cross comb in this in that the comb is crossed between these two frames. But what happened here is the hive was really not strong enough to move up into the box where, this found, uh, where these frames were. So the bees just started drawing it from the bottom. Bees can do goofy things sometimes and that's just what they did in this situation. So just be warned that your bees can take those frames that don't have any foundation in them and draw frame, draw comb rather, all across those frames and really mess things up if you don't get it just right. And once that starts happening, of course there are ways to fix it, but it's nice to not have to fool with that in the first place. I think one of the reasons that a lot of people get into foundationless beekeeping is to help fix mite problems. Now that is a very noble cause, which you should do everything you can to help your bees out with their mite issues. But just be aware that foundationless beekeeping and small cell beekeeping is not a magic bullet as far as mite control goes. You still have to consider that there are other factors involved and those are the reasons that your bees have mites in the first place. The bottom line is even though your bees are drawing out the type of comb that they want, they're not necessarily drawing out smaller comb because bees are not going to draw out cells that they themselves cannot fit in. So. Small cell beekeeping is not a magic bullet, and foundationless beekeeping is not a magic bullet for mite control either. Uh, it could be part of an IPM management solution for varroa mites, but in and of itself, uh, there it's not going to help your bees with mites uh, to the extent that they don't need any other management. So this brings me to the very last thing that I consider to be a disadvantage for foundationless beekeeping. I started beekeeping foundationless I think my second year which would have been 20, 2013 so I've been doing it for about five years now and I mentioned earlier that I'm actually transitioning back to foundation beekeeping and here's the reason. I do not like to take the extra time to wire these frames and yes that's lazy but I just don't have a lot of time to do this and that's the way that it is. Now, if you do not have enough time to wire these frames, you're going to have blowouts in your extractor. And I have found that 40 or 50 percent of these frames tend to blow out in the extractor. And if they don't destroy themselves by doing that, you're going to destroy or greatly damage the comb by prying it away from the wire in the extractor. So that's a big bummer when these frames blow out and they they do it quite frequently. Now, they don't always blow out to the extent that the entire comb comes out, but uh, they will get dislodged, they will get damaged, and the bees sometimes have a big mess to clean up. So, in summary, you can save a lot of time on beekeeping by using foundationless frames unless you decide to put wire reinforcement in these frames. And I would highly recommend you put wire reinforcement in these frames because you're going to have a lot of blowouts and you're going to have a lot of wax foundation or comb falling out of these hives on a good hot day when you forget that you can't that you can't inspect your bees just like this anymore you have to do this so that it supports itself so in summary for this video if you're going to do foundationless I would highly encourage you to try it out if you've got multiple hives try it in one hive or try it in two hives to see how you like it you may just love it and it may be great for you uh, if you do not want to do that that's fine too I mean foundation has worked for a really long time and I'm transitioning back into it myself 
and it's a proven system that absolutely works. But if you're going to use foundationless on the frame that you're going to extract, I would highly recommend that you put some kind of wire or fishing line reinforcement inside of these frames before you put them in the hives so that those bees can build their comb around it and uh, those those frames end up being a whole lot stronger for you. So the frames that you're going to extract, make sure you reinforce them with wire or fishing line. The frames that you're going to use for cut comb, I would not put any reinforcement in it. I would just leave it just exactly like it is. And of course, if you're going to do foundationless deep frames, I would put wire in it regardless. Um, but anyhow, that's all I've got. If y'all can think of any more disadvantages or advantages to foundationless beekeeping or your experiences, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. And subscribe if you have not already done so. And uh, hit that like button if you haven't done that already. And I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.